Hey Earth Signs, welcome to your mid-December check-in. Um, so this is going to be for now through the end of the month and um, we'll see where we're going. So hello Earth Signs, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, and Cross Watchers. Hello, welcome. If you are new to the channel, hi, welcome, happy to see you here. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And if you are returning, thank you so much for your support. So, um, if you haven't already watched the New Moon in Sagittarius reading, um, the New Moon in Sagittarius is happening December 14th or 15th, depending on where you are in the world. So, check that out if you haven't already. might give you some additional insight. And um, this New Moon is super special because it's a total solar eclipse. So, we got the Sag energy of happy, abundant. Um, they're very happy-go-lucky, adventurous, maybe a little impulsive. They're a fire sign. So um, with new moons in general, manifesting is fantastic at this time. And um, a fresh start, new opportunities with the Sagittarius fire influence. Uh, we've got lots of forward movement, lots of inspired action happening. So yay for that. And the 15th is kind of a big deal this year for some reason. Venus is moving into Sagittarius on the 15th. So Venus is all about how we are in relationships. So see where Venus is in your chart if you don't already know. And that kind of gives you the overall of how you are in general. So when we put Venus in Sag, we get that energy of spontaneity, maybe a little non-committal, <laughs> like maybe a commitment phobe, but um, also that happy-go-lucky, adventurous, fun-loving, lucky kind of energy. Chiron also goes direct on the 15th. Chiron is the celestial body comet, I believe, that is the wounded healer. So I've been talking about this since mid-July. I almost said January, <laughs> which is not true. It was July. And um, Chiron's been in retrograde bringing up old wounds to be healed. Not to torture us, but to help us to heal. So it could be from this lifetime. It could be from past lifetimes. Again, see where Chiron is in your chart and maybe how that healing um, needed to take place if you didn't already know. But with Chiron going, uh, coming out of retrograde, going direct, we're going to get a little bit of a reprieve from everything that had been happening with that wound healing. So we get a break. <laughs> Capricorn season begins on the 22nd of this month. Capricorn is a cardinal sign. So cardinal signs usher in the next, um, season. So we're going to be coming into winter. The winter solstice is the day before on the 21st. And um, with the, I'll talk about the winter solstice here for just a moment. The winter solstice is 1221. It's a palindrome. It's 1221, 1221. It's the same forward as it is backwards. It's a mirror. Um, so it is also going to be the culmination of um, the 1212 portal energy that opened up we're going to be at the height of that on 1221. So um, the winter solstice in general is the heralding in of the light. So the darkest day, night, <laughs> the longest night happens, and then the days start getting longer again. So that's why the winter solstice is so important. It's ushering in. We have the season of light. I mean, you can see my Christmas trees. <laughs> um, happy Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, everyone. And each one of those has, um, each one of those holidays has a very special ritual around the season of light, which is absolutely beautiful. Back to Capricorn season. Caps are hardworking and forward thinking, pragmatic practical, very concerned with the material world. They're an earth sign. Um, so they tend to be leaders in their field and have massive career goals. They're very career oriented, maybe a little bit of a workaholic, just saying. Sorry, Caps, I love you, but yeah. And <laughs> um, the 
focus can also be on the budget, your money, anything that's material, your physical home. The um, holidays, most of the holidays happen during Capricorn season, which I always thought was really interesting. So we get very focused on the home, on material stuff. Um, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day happen during Cap season. So making resolutions around um, expanding your career, maybe a new totally different career. And um, a lot of people do the weight loss, which is your meat suit. That is material world and um, budgeting especially after the holidays, we tend to splurge. <laughs> so that could be as well. Learning, um, like going to school or um, some kind of formal education as well. So for earth signs, cap season is probably gonna feel very comfortable for you. The age of Aquarius, it's what they've been singing about for 60 years, <laughs> is finally coming to fruition. So the great conjunction or grand conjunction, however, terminology, it's semantics really. Great conjunction happens every 20 years. Um, so it's kind of a big deal. It's when Mercury, Saturn, and Jupiter all align. So over the course of a few days from the 17th to the 21st, um, they're all going to be coming in together and um, they all meet in the same sign once every 20 years. This year, it's Aquarius, hence the age of Aquarius. That only happens every several hundred years. So once again, kind of a big deal. <laughs> and um, what this means is growth and structure are going to be um, a significant change for the collective, for everybody. And we're going to be embracing unconventional ways of thinking, and we're going to be very focused on the community that's very Aquarian. So maybe we're going to start, <laughs> I said it in the other videos too, maybe we're going to start giving a shit about each other again, which would be great. That would be really nice. Like, let's all get on the same page. Let's have this air of unity. Um, stop seeing each other as separate. We are all one, regardless of what side of the debate you are on versus any major things that are currently happening or just the big stuff in life anyway, it doesn't freaking matter. It's politics. So <laughs> even some of the things that you might say, oh, that's a um, moral thing. Is it? It's politics. So soapbox, I will step off. But um, hopefully we all come together in a more united way. Then we have the full moon in Cancer on the 29th. Cancer's very, um, Cancer's a water sign. So it's very ho home focused, sensitive, nurturing. You're gonna be feeling all your feels, which might be a bit uncomfortable for earth signs, but earth and water tend to go well together. So hopefully it won't be too bad for you. And you're gonna connect or reconnect with loved ones. Um, something's going to be brought to light. The full moon, she's at her fullest illumination. So something's going to be brought to light and um, prompting these connections or reconnections. And full moons are fantastic for releasing. So let go of any resentments or expectations um, or attachments around anything that's Cancerian energy. So there you go, guys. That's wrapping up these last couple of weeks of 2020 and December. Hooray. So as always, this is a general reading. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. For your own personal reading, please feel free to book on my Square site or my website. If you have any questions about the services that I offer, please feel free to email me. It's also in the description box below. And you can follow me on social media. So let's take a look here. Um, as always, gender is neutral. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. If I say he or she, it's just the depiction of the card, like a king or a queen. And if the storyline doesn't fit, don't shoehorn yourself into it. It's okay. Check out your other placements, which I encourage you to do anyway, because it might give you additional insights, pieces to the puzzle, or just resonate more for you. And you can also, if the um, storyline does fit, it feels right for you, then... Um, Feel free to switch roles. So if I say you and it's more like what they're doing or going through, if I say them and then you're like, yeah, that sounds more like me, that's fine. Switch the roles. 
So here we go. All the decks that I'm using are listed in the description box below as well. Here we go. Oh, we have the moon in reverse. This is the wizard's tarot. And it's funny because in the water and fire sign readings, I use this as the clarification deck. Okay. Well, there's a reason. So here we go, Earth signs. Two of Pentacles in reverse. Then I have Cups in reverse. Are these all going to be reversed? <laughs> Seven of Wands in reverse. Nope. The Knight of Swords upright. Okay. So the Moon, Cancer, and Pisces energy here. So with um, having the new Moon at the beginning of the second half of the month, around the 15th, then um, that could be why. The moon is typically about um, secrets being revealed, something coming, something coming to light, cancer energy. Yeah. Okay. I got, I got it. See, we get there. <laughs> the um, cancer full moon, going to bring something to light. Um, probably something that you weren't expecting. Eek. We'll see what comes out when I clarify. Two of pentacles in reverse, so feeling unbalanced, ungrounded, um, not totally sure which way to go. This is about typically work-life balance, so maybe there is an unbalance there. The nine of cups in reverse, um, your wishes aren't, you feel like your wishes aren't being granted, like what you've been wanting isn't being seen in your life. It's like, this isn't what I wanted. The seven of wands in reverse. So um, you're putting down your defenses. You um, probably need to draw some healthy boundaries, <laughs> but putting down your defenses, um, not being so defensive, which is a good thing. And the knight of swords, air signs, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Also the fastest moving knight in the deck. Knights are all about action. So taking some very decisive action, swords are about our thoughts. Good stuff. All good things, all good things. Any fans of Frozen? Um, <laughs> Olaf, I love Olaf. <laughs> so funny, he likes warm hugs. He's so funny. Um, he's like, oh, hey, we were just talking about you. All good things, all good things. <laughs> so anytime I say that, I always channel Olaf. Anyway, all right, moving on. The moon in reverse. So let's clarify. This is the Tarot de Manoy. It is fantastic to use um, at the since we're starting with a new moon. And I'm recording this around the new moon. This is a great deck to use because it is um, Tarot of the Night. That's what Tarot de Manoy means. And um, it's very gothic. 98% female. I love it. Does not follow traditional tarot imagery just so yeah. Ooh, okay so whatever is being revealed is causing some massive anxiety maybe insomnia sleepless nights um energy shifts in general just this is the anxiety and nightmares card okay i'm not trying to scare you but i also don't sugarcoat anything so um i will present anything that is less than fantastic in hopefully a not so scary way. Knight of Wands. All right, so we got the Knight of Swords and the Knight of Wands. Fire signs, Aries, Leo, Sag. Beautiful. Second fastest moving knight in the deck, taking inspired action. Um, whatever is coming to light kind of makes you go, oh my God, for a minute, and then inspires you to take some sort of action. The world in reverse. So you might feel like your world has been turned upside down because of this. It could also be it's not over. Like, eh, we're not quite done yet. Page of Swords. So uh, Air Science, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. This page has the reputation of like spying. And the Nine of Wands. Take, goes with the world in reverse, taking another shot, taking that one last chance, one more time, one more try. Wounded warrior, this is Chiron energy. Could also be a little victim mentality going on. Release it. 
Maybe that's what the moon is showing you is that you've been in victim mentality. You've been a martyr or painting yourself that way. It's time to step out of that energy. All right, two of pentacles in reverse. The lovers in reverse, sign of Gemini. So for some of you, there could be um, a major relationship breaking up, it could be a divorce or um, making a decision. It's a hard overhead decision. Three of pentacles in reverse. So three of pentacles is about teamwork. So with the two of pentacles and the three of pentacles in reverse, definitely feeling off balance. Maybe you feel unsupported. See, my nose is gone. <laughs> it's on the nose for somebody. Um, you, you don't feel like you have your tribe and your team standing behind you, cheering you on, helping you out. Um, so it could be about being too focused on the fine details rather than the bigger picture as well. The Hermit. Beautiful energy. I love it. Hello, Virgo. Love this card. Um, I've been told that it looks like me. So there's that. <laughs> the Hermit energy. Going within. Finding, um, finding yourself. When we're introspective, which is what the new moon calls us to do. Being more introspective. Going within. Finding out what makes you happy. Stop living for anybody else. That is bullshit. Don't do that. The hermit um, could usher in a dark night of the soul, but in general, just go within and find what makes your soul sing. Look around for that nine of wands energy, that victim mentality. Figure out how to transform that energy into something that's um, more productive, more useful, and... Um, serves you well. Ooh, we got two. Ooh, temperance, sign of Sagittarius, which we are in Sagittarius season until the 21st, 22nd. So this is balance. This is ultimate balance. So when you go within, and maybe it's because you've, you've been left alone, it gives you an opportunity. There is a gift in grief. Um, I channeled that in the fire signs reading which temperance Sagittarius is a fire sign. There's a gift in grief and that is to help you find what it is that makes you happy. Three of Wands, it's been a long time coming. You've been at this for a long time. And finally those ships are coming in. Nice. All right, Nine of Cups in reverse. Why is the Nine of Cups in reverse? The Fool. It's an opportunity for a brand new beginning, a new start. Um, so what wasn't working and it's like, I'm not seeing what I'm trying to manifest. There's a reason. It's because you're not supposed to go down that road. There's a mantra that I say, please, and I've said it for years, please lift the blocks from the roads that I am supposed to take and put those blocks on the roads I am not to take. So there's a reason that the doors aren't opening. There's a reason that there's barricades that the roads closed so that you can go down the right path the empress yes so she is all of the queens combined the queen of pentacles the queen of cups the queen of wands and the queen of swords she's the ultimate mother and wife she's very um nurturing creative um takes care of the home gives great advice, like just all the light attributes of all of the queens. So feeling nurtured is important to you. So this is an opportunity to start something new where you are nurtured and you are creative. Seven of Wands, upright. So this is, now you're setting those health, healthy boundaries. It might cause you to feel a little defensive, but, um, Upright to me says healthy boundaries with this combination, knowing that you can um, defend yourself if need be. Four of Pentacles in reverse. So be careful about frivolous spending, but also when our hands are open to give, they're open to receive. So don't be stingy. Give freely of yourself, of your time, your energy, your money, your resources. 
to worthy causes, worthy people, <laughs> pay yourself first, but um, giving, this is the season of giving, being very philanthropic, um, tells the universe, not only are you abundant in those things, so it sends you more, but that you, um, you're in a constant state of flow. People who are stingy and hold stuff together are operating out of a sense of fear rather than security and safety. So if you wanna feel secure, if you wanna feel safe, give freely, openly, willingly, and lovingly. Seven of Wands. In reverse, <laughs> in reverse this time. The Six of Wands. So by drawing those healthy boundaries and getting out of defense mode, you're gonna feel victorious and you might even be publicly recognized for that. Nice. Strength in reverse. So that tells me, hey Leo, sign of Leo, but um, that tells me that it's gonna take some inner strength to be able to do this. You are strong enough. You got this. Two of pentacles in reverse again. See how it looks nothing like the other one? <laughs> you can kind of get the energy there. Beautiful, beautiful energy. With the two of pentacles in reverse, it does, um, you are trying to find a balance. Things are unbalanced right now and a little, little shaky, which is not good for earth signs. <laughs> Very uncomfortable. I get that. But you guys are able to work through it more easily than others. And the Knight of Swords. What's up with the Knight of Swords? The Ace of Swords in reverse. So, and that's another reason I love this deck. It's personified. Normally you would not see a person on um, the Aces, but this one you do. See the crown? has to do with crown chakra. So maybe your crown chakra is blocked. You're not receiving the divine guidance and intuition right now. That heart over head decision with the lovers in reverse. So um, maybe that's something that's going on for you. Maybe that's why you're taking this action so thought oriented. The devil. Hey, Capricorn. So coming into Capricorn season, um, there's some stuff that you need to overcome, some entrapment, enslavement, um, addiction stuff that needs to be overcome. The Hierophant, maybe taking um, sign of Taurus, maybe taking um, an unorthodox approach. If you are Taurus, maybe you feel turned upside down. And um, again, with the... The Hierophant is also about um, marriage, so breaking up of a marriage, too. The Ace of Pentacles. So taking a more concrete approach rather than logical, a more tangible approach, and um, planting those seeds of intention. Beautiful, beautiful energy there. Okay, so let's see what... The divine wants you to know. Angels, gods and goddesses, spirit guides, ascended masters, higher self, whoever it is for you. Focus on service. This is four of pentacles in reverse. Your soul desires only to joyfully serve and to swim in a constant stream of bliss. This stream continuously feeds you everything you need. Put your entire focus upon staying in the stream of giving and receiving flow uh, in every situation and in all that you do. What a beautiful little unicorn. <laughs> I love it. That's gorgeous. Look at the bottom of the deck giving and receiving. <laughs> okay, so earth signs, here you go. 
Giving and receiving is a huge, like being in the flow of giving and receiving, being of service, not so much about yourself, but taking that Aquarius view of um, being more community oriented and minded, um, collective. We are all one. The entire universe operates in cycles similar to your inhalations and exhalations. So breathe. When you only exhale and give, or only inhale and receive, you become out of rhythm with the universe. For optimal health, energy, and replenishment, balance, two of pentacles, balance each inhalation in your life with an exhalation. Give, receive, give, receive, give, receive. Pay it forward. If you want something in your life, pay it forward. If you want somebody's time, give of your time. If you need more money, give some money. If you need whatever it is, more space in your home, clear out clutter. Marie Kondo, your home. <laughs> What's the, um, the Swedish death or Danish something over in that general area of the world? The death cleaning. Hyg? Hyg? I, I don't know if I'm saying it right. H-Y-G-G-E. I think is how it's spelled but it's basically getting rid of anything that you don't need so that instead of when you die people come in and take what they want and get rid of the rest you just do it um, just living a more minimalist lifestyle which probably appeals to earth signs all right so for each of you I'm going to draw an oracle of the seven energies which are chakras card So Capricorn, we're going to start with you since we're coming into your season here at the end of the month. Whoa. All right. A burst of magic just like flew out of the deck. Number 48. Number 48. A burst of magic. And this is related to energy um, center seven, so your crown chakra. Spirituality, ego transcendence, liberation, God consciousness, understanding, and wisdom. So a burst of magic. An epiphany. A sudden higher knowing. A sense that everything has a purpose. Your purpose as a gift bestowed upon you. Cultivating conscious contact. Say that three times fast. <laughs> with a higher power. Coming to know what calls to you and lights you up. Sometimes you may find that something you've been pondering or a dilemma you let go of revisits you without warning. It may hit you while you're thinking about nothing or the trigger may be just the right words arising in conversation, book, or blog. An epiphany strikes like a lightning bolt, waking you up to a truth that has previously eluded you. It's as if the whole world stops in that moment as you integrate the missing pieces of the puzzle you were meant to serve all along. Be mindful today. When information pops up out of the blue, pay attention. The action you need to take will become obvious as you integrate this magical wisdom. Regardless of the subject of your inquiry, you will be transformed. Only good will come of this. How beautiful. All right, Capricorn, look at you. Taurus, well, okay. Oh, you get two. Ears wide open, number 33, which is the Ascended Master number. And Endless Possibilities, number 38. Oh, that's beautiful. I love these cards. Of course, it's Colette Baron Reed. Of course, I love it. Ears wide open, number 33. It's with Energy Center 5, which is your throat chakra. Deep listening as a gift we give to others. Understanding someone else's needs. Showing focused attention, tuning into another, and letting go of the ego's need to be heard. So this is about active listening. The world is constantly speaking to us and offering clues about what is really going on beneath the surface of things. So underneath all that noise, what's really being said? What really needs to be heard? We all have the capacity to hear beyond the noise that reaches our ears. The challenge is when we feel misunderstood and unheard. When we feel insignificant, it's easy to over-explain ourselves in an attempt to get acknowledged, so an overactive 
throat chakra. Purposeful, open listening is an act of true respect and intimacy. When you are in the space of receptivity, letting go of the need to be heard or to be right, you become expansive and alert to meaningful potential. Right now, keep your ears wide open and you will find more than you were searching for. That's beautiful. And number 38, endless possibilities, which is energy six, which is your third eye. Unlimited potential, moving beyond limiting beliefs and the filter of an unhealed past. Using your awareness to discern what is possible and having the courage to leap beyond that. You look at the world through the lens of your life experiences, personality, and conditioning. That filter determines whether you believe in an abundant universe of endless possibilities or various degrees of limiting and finite range of options. When your expectations, unconscious or otherwise, are based on lack, it's difficult to see what is truly available to you, Four of Pentacles in Reverse. As you believe, so will it be for you, as your energy will attract its match in the outer world. That's the law of attraction. Stand with open arms, knowing that you are stepping into beauty, into experiences that are potent and transformative. You are walking past the line that you and others drew long ago, leaping over what was and toward what will be. You are more than you were. Now, what is it that you want? The treasure is yours. You just need to believe it. Nice. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. And last but not least, Virgo. I love how you all showed up in the reading too, <laughs> in the tarot cards. Virgo. Exposed and revealed, number 21. Ooh, it's like the world's eye is upon you. Holy crap, which would probably be very uncomfortable for a Virgo. <laughs> number 21, which is related to the third energy chakra, which is your solar plexus. Healing shame, imposter syndrome, letting go of self-condemnation, freedom from past unresolved wounds, focusing on self-worth, the underlying beauty in rejection. Grief brings a gift. When you experience shame, you don't just feel you've done something wrong. You feel like you are wrong, fundamentally flawed. Know that life loves you and the universe doesn't make junk, only magic. However, many social interactions, especially online, are stepped, uh, steeped in distorted, unhealthy ways of expressing pain by shaming. Here's the way out of this. See shame as a heart-wrenching cry for help that it is. Consider whether you could have been triggered on the out, in the outer world by unresolved issues that matched all your inner pain points. If someone is shaming you, perhaps you have triggered them. How miserable they must be to expend their energy in such tex uh, toxicity. Look upon shame as an opportunity for growth, evolution, healing, and freedom. Let go of your attachment to control. Admit that this emotion isn't something you have power over and surrender to a higher power. So at the full moon, release that. Brene Brown is one of my most favorite modern authors. And she, her entire thing in life <laughs> is about shame and guilt. So beautiful. Check out her TED Talks on shame. She has her website. She's all over social media. So if you don't know Brene Brown, get to know her because your life will change, I promise you. She's so insightful about shame and how it has control over our lives. And it, to me, that's about inner child healing because we learned that somewhere probably from a parent or other adult who was very present in our lives. So I wish you healing, Virgo. That's, that's heavy energy. That's a, that's a burden for sure. So with that being said, I hope that this resonated for you in some way, that there was something in here that you can take with you through the last half of this month and year. 
and I will see you guys at the winter solstice reading. Take care.